let me have a look on my laptop, see who's here. I know Scotty Bean was here earlier, so hopefully Scott is still here. Um, so I'm a bit late, yes, I went for a late walk and then I had to make dinner and just didn't leave enough time, so sorry. But here I am. Uh, so John is here as well. So we've got Scott, we've got John, and we've got Heather. Hello, Scott. Hello, John. Hello, Heather. Nice to see you. Um, not really prepared a lot for this live. I just thought I haven't done one in absolutely ages. Well, it feels like it. Hello, Margie. And so I thought I would just quickly um, stick one in. My cat's going skip, so just running up and down. Um, so I've got a few things actually that I've brought along for show and tell. Um, hey Christy. And yeah, one thing is, so my mum's in town. Mummy Dearest is visiting here in uh, the UK for I think a few weeks. And I saw her briefly on Sunday and she gave me a present. She gave me this. I have no idea what this is. It's called Night Muse Eau de Parfum from Bourgeois. Uh, she said she it was cheap. She sniffed like, utter random cheapy stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to sniff this. I'm guessing it might be a clone of maybe like, um, is it Modern Muse Nui, Nui or Noir? Maybe. It does say, uh, I've got some notes on the back. It's a Sheepra, floral Sheepra. It's got rose, it's got something called Carambola. And then it's got free show. Um, oh, so must be my internet. Uh, I don't really know. Can you see me all right? Am I still buffering? Can you hear me? Uh, Christy says cute top. Thank you, Christy. Uh, can you hear me okay? Can you see me? Carambola is star fruit. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, right, well, hopefully, it's maybe my internet's a bit jumpy because the actual thing, was it called a router? It's like through there and out by the front door. So, um, <clears throat> okay, yeah, so, oh, hey, Eugene, nice to see you. So, what, what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna retouch on Hera, which I did a video about a, a little while ago, uh, Hera from Papillon. I'm going to talk about that a little post today as well. So we've got a few little things, but it's not going to be particularly long because I'm tired. So let me know what you are all wearing. My scent of the night is, let's find it. This is it. It's Ylang Ylang Nosy Bee from Paris Monte Carlo. I've talked about it a lot, so... It's not a lot to say except it's a uh, ylang ylang with a really lovely natural vanilla accord it's got um a richness to it but it's also that kind of exotic floral that takes you to holidays and and stuff and i i just absolutely love 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 that one so that's my scent of the night let me see if anyone is sharing what they're wearing are you sharing what you're wearing there goes the cat out the cat flap Oh, Claire's here. Hello, Claire. Um, JC's here. Hey, JC. Uh, Eugene loves a jumpy internet. Yes. Um, uh, Claire's wearing stash off of Sarah Jessica Parker. I think that's a really interesting perfume. It smells coconutty to me. It's not got a coconut note, but do you know what I mean, Claire? Uh, Christy's wearing Byredo Rose of No Man's Land, soft and spicy. We've got Dorota Gustav here, says hello. Hey, Dorota. Elaine, she's, uh, she says, hi, guys. I clicked thumbs up on the way in. Oh, yeah, you can do that if you want as well. If you want to be, be cool like Elaine, you can always click the thumbs up. Rachel's here and drawn by. Hey, guys. Hey, Cynthia. Oh, we've got lots of people. What, have you not got anything better to be doing? What are you doing here? <laughs> Rachel's wearing... Gucci Bloom from Albert, Alberto Marias. Uh, JC's wearing Ralph Lauren red polo cologne. 
Marty's undecided what to wear. It's already 1.30 p.m. Need to make my mind up. You do, you do. Think about your mood. How is your mood? And then let that drive you. Do you want something heavy? Do you want something soft and light? Uh, drawn by it was wearing carnal flower. Very nice. Heather. Wood sage and sea salt. Couldn't be bothered. It's hot here, really. We had a bit of sun for a short time today. Um... Have you seen the new Jo Malone colognes? I just saw them at Blue Water the other day. Um, I thought one of them was had like a similar name to Wood Sage and Sea Salt, but it was slightly different. Um, I smelt them. I think I no, did. I smell them. I feel like I smelt them, but I don't think I did. You know, I think I'm imagining it. I dreamed it. Uh, Eugene Santal Mas. So Masaya, Masua, Masuya, um, Eugene, tell us more about that. <laughs> uh, Lily's here. Hey, Lily. She's wearing Bandit. Elaine's wearing All Saints Incense. Um, doo -doo -doo. Heather says, oh my God, my puppy just hit my phone and punished someone. How, explain, <laughs> explain a bit more. Is this um, screen not very bright, is it? Is that better? Explain a bit more on that, Heather, what happened? Right then, um, drink of the night. The drink of the night is empty calories. It's a vodka and Diet Coke. First one of the evening, maybe the only one, who knows? Okay, so let's get started with stuff. If you haven't shared your scent of the night yet, just throw it in there whenever you want. I'm going to start with what I wore today. So uh, today I went to the gym because I'm a good girl. And uh, one fragrance I noticed, not this one. Where is it? Okay, here it is. Um, one fragrance that I really love wearing to the gym, I've done it a couple of times now, because I love how it projects when you heat up. And I don't really, I don't work that hard, but, but I, I do get a bit warm. And, um, and what I love is the way this projects off of me when I'm warm. <laughs> and it's Vanida Tahiti. So it's the same brand that I, um, the, from the Ylang Ylang one that I'm wearing now. Vanita Tahiti has quite similar notes. It does have Ylang Ylang, it does have the uh, vanilla accord, but it's kind of, I guess the Ylang Ylang is more muted. It's not as strong. And this is this really lovely airy quality and kind of like a very nuanced, multi textured vanilla. It, it feels like it has this, this texture to it. it it's hard to explain, but it's 3D, like it's it's full and it's voluptuous. So when you get a vanilla in a, a modern, let's say you take a modern, let's take Oriana for example, um, there's a vanilla in that and it's very much like a creamy, uh, straight up sort of, I guess you could say vanilla frosting on a cake or uh, vanilla ice cream. Lots of vanilla, modern day, vanilla records that have got kind of flat but they you know they smell very nice like but yeah like melted ice cream or something like that this has a little bit of spice a little bit of woods it's just really really interesting and I love it and I, I remember th when I first got it it wasn't really projecting very much and I find it's not a big projector it's not a skin scent but it's not a big projector but when you wear it for some activity that's going to get you a little bit hot. So obviously we're talking about the gym in my case. It really does project really well. And it, it, every time you breathe in, you just smell it. And it's it's amazing. I really, really love it. So as for Nida Tahiti, absolutely love it. So that was my scent of the day. Let's see who else do we have in the room. Oh, I see. Okay, so Heather's puppy deleted 
drawn by sense comments accidentally. Th these things happen. <laughs> I hope he hasn't put him in the naughty corner as well. Uh, wild creature is wearing narcissi... I think you mean Narciso, Narciso Pudre, but Narcissist Pudre, why not? Um, could, I think that's uh, Amber Heard's signature scent, <laughs> Narcissist Pudre. I'm a bit obsessed. Who's following that trial? Uh, Where it's not really a trial, is it? It's like a, it's a defamation case, isn't it? Um, who's following that? I, I don't know why. I think I clicked on one thing on YouTube and I, I didn't even know really who she was or any of the history. And then now my feed is just full of it and I, I, and it's fascinating i'm fascinated by the psychology of 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 the the people involved heather and um heather um amber and um johnny depp fascinated by what's coming out the um, the you know when you watch your body language videos and you learn all these things that they're picking up on about and it, obviously most of it's focused on amber being sort of um the naughty person in the situation but I'm absolutely fascinated by it who else is uh, we have Anna hello Anna uh, <laughs> oh, she she put someone in a timeout the puppy put someone in a timeout <laughs> Hillary's here hey Hills Clary <laughs> hey y'all and Juan, hello Juan, is wearing Naxos. <laughs> Heather is mortified and sorry because of her puppy's actions. <laughs> uh, Elaine's watching the trial. Uh, Margie, so true, I'm obsessed with Amber Heard trial. Uh, Christy, following the defamation case, I had to break myself away. Yes, it is. I think it is almost like uh, it's a bit like rubbernecking in traffic at an accident. It's like, you know, you shouldn't be interested to see what kind of wreckage is going on there, but you can't help it. And it is like that, isn't it? It's like um, it's compelling. Elaine, I actually think Amber is a victim of narcissistic abuse and debt solely duping delight all the time in the court. Okay, I I think that neither of them are innocent, for sure. It can't be easy to be with someone who has um, alcohol and drug addictions and stuff. But the evidence that I've seen so far seems to amount to the fact that she is um, not in control of her emotions. She's... Uh, she's definitely abusive as well um, but yeah um, I suppose really the only people that really really know the truth are the two of them uh, Hills is all is wearing um, Narciso Rodriguez Umbre so we've got another Narciso that's a lovely fragrance I enjoy that one um, Hills says rubber neck is my favorite pastime I can't help it Elaine says Amber's behaviour is trauma bonded. Maddie is here. Good evening, Claire. And oh, fluffy lemon top by 4160 Tuesdays for me today. Very, very nice. Um, Juan says, good pronunciation for my name. Most peeps can't say it right. Well, thank you very much, Juan. <laughs> okay, right, where were we? Shall we open this then? So uh, it's called Night Muse bought for me by my mum and uh, she said it was very cheap but it smelt good and it's from Bourgeois above Bourgeois says Clan Clin or Clan Doy Clan Doy um, and it's a floral sheepra so let's see let's see what it's like something a little bit different can't get it out Uh, Tim says, hi Claire, late to the party, just topped up Le Leon. Does it need topping up? That's a nuclear fragrance. 
Lily says it's all a bit it's a bit sad all round. If she's a true victim of abuse, she's at a disadvantage being that Depp is a bigger star. If she's not, it's detrimental to true victims. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the same. Like he's he's obviously got more money, more fame, more history. Um but you know, I there's a rumour now, I don't know if any of you have seen this, there's just, there's a video that came up in my feed saying, did Amber Heard kill her best friend? Um, so, yeah. Right. Okay, we are out of the box, out of the box. Night Muse, I can actually smell, smell it from here, Night Muse. Um, has a bit of a vintagey smell coming straight out of the box. Let's sniff. Uh, John says, yeah, they're both not great, are they? But yeah, I'd say someone who films conversations and the partner cutting themselves has some sort of weird issues. <laughs> um, drawn by, has my time out, timed out. Drawn by, welcome back. Sorry about that. It was the puppy's fault. Um, right. Topped up from 36 hours ago. All right, Tim, that makes sense. Okay. Night Muse. Night Muse. Let's see, where's it? Here we go. It's going on paper because I'm not putting this straight on my skin. <laughs> because I'm a snob. Hmm. It's actually quite nice. It's quite nice. It's smooth. You can smell the jasmine, but it's not like really um, full on. Like it's a more tame jasmine. It's a bit soapy. Yes, it's quite soapy. Very clean smelling. It does have a tiny touch of, of a vintage feel. Like you can tell it's not a modern fragrance. It probably is a modern fragrance, but it's... My guess is it's a it's copying something else that's not modern. Yeah, it's like it's soapy. I don't know what's causing this soapiness. But it does it smells like a floral bar of soap. Shower? I I, I don't really know. Um going back to sort of childhood obviously. Um Yeah. Why is it reminding me of my dad? That's a strange thing. I mean, it's a, it's a perfume marketed to women, um, but it does smell soapy and clean. Maybe it's reminding me a little bit of Joven Musk, which he used to wear a lot. Well, he still does. Um, and it's good. I really like Joven Musk. I don't know, but yeah, it's a little, it's, it's, it's a, a floral, but it's not heady, screechy, sharp at all. It's definitely kind of mellowed out florals, rounded florals, but lots of this soapiness. It's like it literally smells like a bar of soap, all sudsy and bubbly. Yeah. Yeah. That's not bad. I would wear that. Interesting. So that's Night Muse from Bourgeois. So I'll come back to that in a bit. We'll let the let the paper have some time. Right, let's just have a little catch up in your comments. <laughs> Rich Mitch says, do you like Rose? I forgot. Uh, me? Yeah, I like Rose. I probably don't... I don't have that many Rose perfumes. I like... I like a Rose Gourmand. And I like a rose, it's kind of like gothic, you know, like incense and stuff. But I don't really wear, as much as I enjoy them, I don't really wear the more soapy roses or the very fresh, like, um, you know, the Maison Francis Kirk de Jeanne one. Um, they're a little bit too much. They just make me think of hand cream from Marks and Spencer's. 
Lily says, now this is the real trial drawn by Sense versus Heather's puppet. Yeah. Yeah, where is Yara? Here she is. Why are you this way, Hill? Um, <laughs> hello, Yara. Good to see you. Uh, Elaine likes soapy and a fragrance. Uh, Christy says, love a cheapie, it's a little frill, makes me feel happy, yeah. <clears throat> right, um, okay, so what's next, what's next, I'm going to quickly talk about Hera from Papillon, I did do a little video, mostly based on the opening of the fragrance, then I did an Instagram that was a little bit more in depth, an Instagram, just a, a photo and some words. Um, but you can see that I have pretty much used it all up. I am definitely going to be buying it on the 16th. And what I noticed and what I didn't really say, I'm going to see if I can get any more out of here. What I didn't say when I first did my first impressions is how you can really smell the iris right from the start, mixing in with everything. So when I first sprayed it, oops, when I first sprayed it, the first time when it first got here, the, the florals felt really, really vibrant, really lively, like they were dancing around, it was amazing. And since I've heard it, I don't know if it's just mellowed out, but it's not quite so, um, vibrant with those florals like it's like they've mellowed out in just in the time that I've had the sample and they're mixing in with the iris you can it's like and I always say iris smells a bit like concrete dust and it, it certainly does to me here it's like you took a few of the white florals um is it orange blossom is there jasmine yeah of course there's jasmine um and I think there's a little bit of rose in there as well but you took the florals and you mixed them up and you got some concrete dust and you put the concrete dust in the mix, stirred it all up and that's what you get. Um, and then as it starts to dry down and there's narcissus in there as well, um, which I think just gives it a tiny hint of the greenness that narcissus can bring plus the heady side, you know, the daffodil kind of like heady, lovely, lovely side of narcissus. Then as it dries down and flowers just gently sort of mellow more and then you get, there's oak moss in here. It's not a listed note, but listed confirmed because I, I was sure I could smell oak moss and the oak moss starts to come more more to the forefront. Um, and I did say to her there's something anacedic, I think, uh, at some point and she said she did put in a, um, is it aniseed? She did put something in there that's a little bit like aniseed, like a, a, an accord or something. Um, but basically, I absolutely love it. And yeah, it's really natural that she said it's quite a high concentration of naturals. And I am definitely getting it. I'm buying it on the 16th. Can't wait. So really, that was my, my little update on that one. Um... Yeah, so that was Hera from Papillon. Uh, John says, yes, it's very earth oris at first, isn't it? Do you get a slight non-aldehydic touch of Chanel number five? Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. We take the, the, the sharp hairspray like aldehydes out of Chanel number five. Kind, yeah, kind of. Definitely has this vintage feel, um, especially when you get to the dry down, when that oak moss starts to come out. It does have that kind of like old school. Rachel says, I can't wait for my bottle. Uh, Maddie says, ooh, love aniseed, even more excited to try it now. It's not particularly noticeable. I, in fact, I only really noticed it once, but it happened to be when I was writing stuff down and I mentioned it to Liz and she said, yeah. Um, or was it, um, oh, I might be wrong. I'm, I might be not aniseed. Um, carnation, I think. I, I might have said to her, has it got carnation or clove in it? I might be mixing things up, but it only, as I say, I only noticed it once and then um, and Liz confirmed it, but 
yeah, I've forgotten. I think it was a combination note. Um, Margie says, I think I'm going to go for Hera too. I think Liz is amazing. Yes, she is. Um, Tim's going to be getting a, a sample of Hera next week, hopefully. Yeah, you've got to try it, Tim. It's absolutely stunning. Oh, love it. Yeah, I've been just doing one little spray here and there of the sample just to kind of like get a little hit. Can't wait to drown myself in it. Cannot wait. Right, little swig. I um, did, did a calculation of how many calories to have to lose a bit of weight and um, that's what I'm doing. But you know what it's like, you do something like that and it's on your mind all the time. It's so annoying. I wish I could like, forget it. I, should, I shouldn't be mentioning it because it's just bringing it back. Just need to get on with life. Just count the calories, but try not to think about it. Uh, John, you going for it too? Yeah, yeah. I thought you'd like it. Hey, Karine. Yes, it's alive. Good to see you. Bonsoir, madame. Comment t'appelles-tu? Où est le gars? <laughs> Sorry, where's that come from? That was a schoolgirl French there. Right, what's next? Shall I show you what arrived in the post today? so beautiful this bottle is so beautiful so obviously I bought it second hand uh, this is frangipan from Chantical French <laughs> French brand Chantical and look at it look at that it's so gorgeous you got this um, lovely plastic <laughs> lovely plastic crystal on the top and really nice it's a bit lalique like the sort of the glass has this frosted raised bits i think they're flowers and yeah it's beautiful so frangipan i've spoken about it a couple of times now because i got hold of a decant actually that decant came from this bottle uh from a fragrance friend we'll call her v in case she doesn't want her name mentioned um, a fragrance friend on a fragrance uh, friend from a Facebook group, and I put a call out a while ago asking if anyone would sell me a decant of Frangipan because I'd had a decant years and years ago, loved it, but when I bought a bottle, I bought a vintage bottle, not the current formulation, and the decant had come from the current formulation, and there was a quite a difference. Most people usually always prefer the vintage when it comes to fragrances. However, I didn't love the vintage as much as I loved the newer version. So long story short, I kind of forgot about it for a while and then recently wanted to retry it and had the decan and then Valentina, oh damn it, sorry. The person called V put up, um, on a Facebook group that she was selling this. So I nabbed it for a really, really, very, very reasonable, um, cheap price. Uh, she said she got it cheap herself and generally speaking on the Facebook groups, it's not it's not uh, aimed at profit making, but still I really, really appreciate um, her selling it for such an affordable price. And now I have this beauty, which is of course a frangipani perfume, but it also has vanilla, and I don't know what the other notes are anymore. I think there might be some jasmine. There's definitely a couple of other white florals in there. It has that beachy feel. It's not the most unique thing in the world. There are lots of perfumes out there that are kind of beachy, white floral vanillas. And there's tons, but I just think it's done very beautifully. It just makes me feel holiday. Makes me feel, you know, tropical island. Let's go, let's go with someone here. It's so pretty, like it's really, really pretty. So a while ago we were talking about doing um, a video on pretty fragrance. This definitely must go in that video when I finally do it. So that's Frangi Pan from Shantikal. I thought it was discontinued because I searched for it online and then I couldn't find it anywhere. It was sort of sold out or not available. 
Well, since then I have seen it in one major store. I can't remember which one. So I don't think it is discontinued. Maybe they had a stock issue. I'm not sure, but it's beautiful. It's got a freshness. There's definitely going to be some sort of citrus top in there. It smells a little bit pink. So it's almost like it, it could have some kind of um, different floral, like a, I don't know, like a freesia or a peony or something like that. But the main thing is this, this tropical kind of frangipan. But it's pretty smooth. It's got a really nice, but this is that kind of vanilla that, that's more flat. So I was talking about Vanita Tahiti having all these different facets and being really, really interesting. I feel like the vanilla in here is probably much more simplistic, Potentially it's a synthetic vanilla, I don't know. The fragrance isn't about the vanilla. The vanilla plays a role, it's, but it's more about the florals in here. It's very smooth and, um, and kind of fresh and reviving and lovely. And <laughs> Je m'appelle Karine, indeed, she says. Um. Elaine says, LMS products use frangipani in many of the lotions and potions. Yeah, it's funny you say that, Elaine. Years and years ago, I worked on a cruise ship and I worked for the company that make LMS. And so, yeah, I used to love their, their products. So the, the Monoi, what was it? The Monoi, they've got the Monoi oil and they've also now got a body cream. I say now. It's been out a long, long time, but when I was working on the ship, I don't think the body cream was was a product at the time. I think we, there was just the oil. We used to warm the oil up and make um, sort of treatments with it and stuff, you know, like do massage with it and things like that. Um, yeah, love that. I'm, have I still got them? No, I think I finally used a bottle up that I had. But yeah, it is beautiful. Uh, Olfactive Story says, I'm not really familiar with this brand. It's not widely available here. That's funny, isn't it? It's a French brand. Um, mind you saying that, it's not that widely available here. I don't, it's not in every department store. It's in, be, it's in like, I think it's in Harrods, maybe Selfridges in London, but would I find it anywhere else? I'm not actually sure. So I think they're, they're no, they're in Space NK which I don't know if Space NK are in France. Um, but yeah, they're definitely in Space NK, which is much more, a little more um, widely spread around the UK. Uh, Sherry is here. Hi, Claire, just catching the live. Lovely to see you, Sherry. Uh, Dana is here. And uh, Dina, sorry. Hey, Dina. Uh, so good. So yeah, I'm really happy to have Franji Pan. Because I'm not really buying at the moment. I mean, I'm going to buy Hera, but I'm not just, I'm not buying, it's not stuff coming to my house that much at all. Because I'm trying to declutter. I want a really nice curated collection of stuff that I regularly use. Um, I will keep some things for reference or some things for particular reasons that I'm, you know, that I'm not necessarily using, but... You know what I mean. I want the majority of my collection to be regularly used. So I'm trying not to just randomly buy stuff, particularly blind buy stuff, uh, only for me to find I'm not using it, to feel like I need to sell it or swap it. So yeah, I'm not really buying a lot. But when I frangie pan, I, because I kind of told myself you should get a bottle and it was a, so, such a good price. I just, I had to, I had to. Um, oh, it's, um, Shanti Carl is an American brand. Interesting. Dina says, I'm new at this whole live thing. Are you doing fine, Dina? You're doing great. Oh, Dina is Heather's friend. Ah, oh, real life friend. Oh, well, welcome to the community, Dina. <laughs> Dina says, I watch you, Claire, because Heather told me about your channel. I love your English accent. Thank you, Dina. And Lizzie Bean is here. I'm late to the party. Hey, Claire Bear. Hey, Lizzie Bean. Lovely to see you. 
Um, Maddie says we'd love a whole uh, updated whole collection video at some point. Yes, I must do that. It's a lot of work, isn't it? <laughs> it's like getting them all out. Um, but I probably should. I probably should get them all out, clean the shelves, <laughs> give them all a little bit of a polish anyway. Um, Claire says I'm with you on that. I don't want many more. I want an almost one in one out. But I say this now. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's tough. It's tough. Um, we have to control ourselves. It can be tough. Okay, right, let's have a little swig and then we'll move on to, what else? I've not got much more to talk about actually. Or oh, one more perfume down here. Oh no, I've got two more things. I've got two more things. So I just wanted to talk about a fragrance I've been using a lot and show you how much of a dent I've made in it. And it's my Joyeuse Tuberuse. So, uh, some of you would have seen when I unboxed this, it wasn't that long ago. Or well, what are we talking, a month or two? And now, that's what's left. So, I'm really loving it. For someone who doesn't really love tuberose generally, I am loving this stuff. Let's go up here with it. Mm. And it's quite a simple fragrance, I think. <laughs> Claire says, well, are you drinking that? <laughs> um, it's quite simple. It's this green, and I don't really do green, but it's like a green, almost peppery. And when I say peppery, I'm talking more of the the effect of pepper than the scent exactly of pepper. You know how pepper kind of like pops? You know what I mean? The, the, the fresh zing. Uh, this peppery green white floral, that's not that sweet. But then it has this background of, I don't think I get much more from it than that. It's got this, it does have this like slightly sweet, pretty floral element to it. But not like this, like this, when I say not like this, not like the frangipan. That frangipan is really smooth and like, uh, richer denser the frangipan this is really like kind of fresh it's more zingy like poppy fresh lively um not so sweet not so smooth but not that it's not well blended but it's just it's a different texture it's a different feel even though they're kind of like, you could say they're similar, oh, like really quite different. And to me, this is like, this is kind of exciting. It's just got this like, zing, woo. <laughs> um, right, so uh, Rachel, this is Queer Beluga from Guerlain. And this is the old style bottle before they put them all in the new bottles. I'm not Queer Beluga, so I just read Queer Beluga on. This is Tuberous. Joyous Tuberous. It's Joyous Tuberous. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm absolutely loving it. The only problem is it's not particularly strong. So I do, I could definitely wear that to the gym. In fact, I think I have. And again, like once it warms up, it pushes out. But it's not one, I wouldn't take it to a really busy pub because it's just, it's just going to sit there and when I go out to really busy places I want something that pushes out a bit more. Um, but great at the gym because your, your heat pushes it out, great for um, you know, just, just general day to day stuff because you, you don't need beast mode fragrances all the time. But um, I think that's why I've worn through a lot of it is because I do spray a lot because I want, I really love how it smells and I want to be able to smell it on myself. So I spray a lot. 
so that's why I spray it a lot because I you know often and then I spray a lot of it so hence why I've used nearly half the bottle if I paid full price for that I, I think I'd be like self-harming right now but truth be told if I paid full price for it I wouldn't be wearing it as often or in such a quantity that I wear it but because I got it for a bargain on the TK Maxx website if I got it for a what I think it was 40 quid I think it was 40 quid maybe 50 but I'm pretty sure it was 40 because I got it for that price I'm cool with spraying it a lot um, Elaine says, I'm not keen on tuberose at all. Normally, if I see it as an ingredient, I avoid, but intrigued to sniff it. My, my favourite pepper is black pepper, but it's mainly in men's fragrances. Yeah, I really enjoy pepper as a note in fragrance. Um, Dina says, the only tuberose scent I have every, ever tried was my way, and I really enjoyed it, so I guess I like tuberose. Yeah, probably. Um, I think the tuberose in my way is closer to the tuberose in carnal flower um madonna's true for dare it's kind of like a full-on tuberose or a bit more of a full-on tuberose i would say this one is and i've heard this said before by people before i ever tried it is a tuberose for people who don't like tuberose and it's kind of like case in point here because here i am I'm the one generally saying I don't really like tuberose, but I love that. So I would say if you don't love tuberose, then it's definitely one to try. But also if you do, it's worth trying, but maybe it might not, it might not actually meet your needs. Tim says, I wish Galan in Selfridges would carry the more high end frags. It's impossible to try them. Uh, yeah, I, I think outside of London, um, but Selfridges, Selfridges have got, in London, Selfridges have got the high-end Galans, I think, haven't they? I'm not sure. Um, John says tuberose is a stunning flower. We all know, we all know John loves his tuberose. Um, okay, right, a little drink and then I've got something else. One more thing to talk about now that I've paid tribute to my beautiful tuberose. Tuberu, joyous tuberose. Has anyone tried this? So this is called Divine Perversion. Who's tried Divine Perversion um, from Hedonic? So this is the Francesca Bianchi, uh, her new line, um, her new brand. So... It's a separate brand where she creates leather jewellery and then she created a perfume to kind of go with it. I've borrowed this. This isn't mine. Uh, I, uh, a couple of weeks ago for the first time in a long time and uh, he let me borrow this. I was really curious to try it. Um, so has anyone tried it? Do you know anything about it? Um, Rachel says, yes, I have. Uh, <laughs> Claire says I'm waiting for someone to say not in fragrance but yes <laughs> um, right let's get it out the box so there's there's the box and there's the bottle looks like it's got some dust on it let's give it a little dust so there is the bottle Oh, crikey. Right. It's a tight fit, guys. Divine Perversion is a tight fit. So, I'm going to spray it on the paper. I have tried this on my skin a couple of times. And I have some thoughts and memories. I haven't smelt it for a little while, actually. Um, I was meaning to do a review. Uh, here we go. Uh, Rachel says it reminds me of October like a grown-up Halloween night frame. I can see that 
Yes, okay. I'm picking up things that I don't remember actually. Um, so it has a note of caramel. And I would say that's probably the strongest note for me. You can smell iris, it's got iris. It also smells to me like Bailey's Irish cream, you know, um, you know, Bailey's. Um, like an, a liqueur, like a really rich cream liqueur. Christy, I walked away, what is this one? It's Hedonic, so it's a Francesca Bianchi, uh, her other line, and it's called Divine Perversion. I've taken the lid off, put the lid back on. That's on the top of the lid, by the way. Right. You can definitely smell the iris. Um, definitely smell the caramel, and it does, to me, smell like Bailey's. It's really rich. In actual fact, it's too rich for me. Um, I just find it a little cloying. But it, it's really nice, like the, it's a beautiful, it's very, very smooth. It's a little musky, like kind of like a clean musk feel. But with this, um, and uh, there is leather in here, but the leather, to me the leather is really, really downplayed. Like from reading about it, I was called Divine Perversion. Uh, the jewellery line to go with it is leather. So I was expecting it to be... Uh, also, Francesca talks about an, anim quite a, an animalic note. To me, I'd say that the leather's really subtle. It's there. If you know it's there, you, you, you'll pick it up. But it's almost like more like a suede. It's very soft. Yeah, it's more like a suede. But this caramel note is a bit too much for me. It's, it's just um, really quite sweet and noticeable. And I have noticed that I'm not a big fan of caramel, even though I love, I love gourmands and I love sweets and I love calories. <laughs> I love all sweets. It can just be a little too much. Like the caramel to me is just too much. I think if the caramel could, like the caramel's up here, in my in my perception, obviously we all perceive things slightly differently. In my perception, the caramel's like that, and all the other notes are like that. If the caramel could come right down there, and all the other notes go up like that, then it it would be stunning. But it's just a bit too sweet. That like if someone walked past me smelling like this, I'd say you smell utterly delicious but it is just a bit too sweet for me if you know um shea and blue salted caramel that that i remember the first time i tried it i was like wow like that's amazing but i also realized that it, it I, in fact i think i had a decant of it and it was too much like it's just and it actually smelled like caramel popcorn to me that one but it's just too much like sickly and I think it's just something about caramel to me is just a bit too sickly. But this has the most beautiful iris mixed in. Like iris and musk kind of like thing, which I love. Suede, you know, suede. I love all of that. But the caramel's just just a bit on the just a bit too much for me. I don't know what all the all the notes are. There's definitely a lot more notes than what I've mentioned, but that's mostly what I get. Um, Christy says caramel was a hard note it has to be freezing outside for me to really enjoy it yeah I can see I can see this I mean, um, Rachel mentioned a uh, Halloween night I can totally see this on the coldest nights on a Halloween night on a bonfire night you you got um in a few sprays of this and you're all wrapped up in a big coat and scarf and everything and you've got this just a little bit of sweetness just coming out um, it, and that it would be perfect but I just don't 
this is to me this is full on gourmand it's um oh, my word didn't come out right there gourmand <laughs> to me this is a full on gourmand i don't know if francesca bianchi would describe it like that but to me that's how it feels it's it's very gourmand um and but it does have the this beautiful musky it is counteracted by this kind of like musky iris accord musky iris suede accord it really that help it does help just, but it's just a bit too sweet for me uh alicia's here hey alicia good to see you she says i'm with you on that i prefer marshmallow or vanilla to caramel yes yeah definitely um So yeah, that is Divine Perversion off of Hedonic. Um, I don't know if I'll review it or not fully. Um, I don't know. I was I sort of tell myself, right, you must do this, review that, talk about that, and oh, never get round to it. Make a video about pretty perfume, never get round to it. <laughs> I just haven't got round to a lot of stuff lately. I don't know why. I mean. I went through a bit of an unpleasant time around Christmas in the first couple of months of the year and I wasn't really feeling it. Um, I'm definitely back to a much more happy person, so I don't know what's holding me back, but I'm kind of getting busy with, I, I kind of want to sort my house out a little bit. I finally might decorate the front room. <laughs> Dip, bit of decluttering going on. Um, so yeah, I just haven't got around to doing that much here on YouTube, here on YouTube, as people say. But I did do a video, was it yesterday or the day before? So um, <laughs> there's that. But yeah, I don't know, I need to make notes of, of things, videos to make, and then kind of like try and actually make them. Yeah. Uh, Dina says, what's the weather like in England right now? It's really warm here in the Midwest. Um, it's it's a bit it's a bit strange at the moment down here where I am southeast of England. Uh, today was a bit cloudy. We had some rain this morning, not too heavy, just a bit of rain. And then this afternoon we had about half an hour, forty five minutes of of quite a nice bit of sun. But then the clouds came, so uh, I don't know what the temperature is. Uh, I think yesterday was better. So we. Um, summer kind of looked like it was coming for a while we did have some really nice days and now yeah it's it's more of a wet wet spring again but yeah four seasons per day says john yeah four seasons in one day uh john says well claire you motivate all of us well thank you john <laughs> just a shame i can't motivate myself <laughs> um to London every time I go there my wallet cries <laughs> is it just perfume that you spend your money on there Karina or are there other things that you like to indulge in in London uh, Elaine says next week is meant to be a heat wave in the southeast oh good uh, next week I'm off I'm sorry I've got um oh it's one of my must be my perfume rash <laughs> um itchy um Next week, good, because I've got the week off, so I'm well up for that. Sitting in the sun, riding my bike. I went on a bike ride yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, it was. Yeah, went on a bike ride yesterday. That was really nice. I'm going to try and do more bike rides, which is good for burning off the 1,600 calories I'm allowed per day. Not that we're talking about that. <laughs> Uh, Karine says, perfume, makeup, clothes, shoes, I have too many vices. Oh dear, yeah. Yeah, London will get you there. There's there's a lot of choice. A lot. What about food though? Uh, the f choice of food in London is great. <laughs> uh, Tim says, yep, you're either overdressed or underdressed on an English spring day. Yeah, it's difficult to know, isn't it? Like, you're about to leave the house and like, what, what shall I wear? Like, oh, you have to take an assortment of, of jackets and jumpers and stuff. <laughs> D 
Dina says, wow, well, so cool. We never talked to anyone who lived in England before now. I'm so happy. <laughs> Dina. Um, I'm, I'm glad. I'm really glad I, I made you happy. Um, and Claire, Claire is also from, um, not from London, from England. So yeah, she says she loves the chat anytime. Um, <laughs> Karine says, come on, I don't come from France to get ruined on British food. How rude. <laughs> mm. I'm excited to go to Milan. I'm going to go to Essence in, is it June? Is it next month, I think? Um, talking of food, Italy, pizza is my favourite thing in the world, I think. And yeah, so I'm excited to go to Milan and enjoy the amazing pizza and the gelato. Oh, yes. Really can't wait for that. Don't know about the calorie counting. Maybe calories don't count in Milan. So has anyone heard that? Uh, I think it's a scientific fact. If you can just confirm it in the live stream. Uh, calories don't count in <laughs> Milan. <laughs> Christy says, Italy, a carb feast. Absolutely. I think last time I had pizza every single day. Yeah. I love pizza though. And, and the Italians, well, they, they invented it. So, yeah. Uh, Maddie says, yeah, it's a fact. Yay! Oh, <laughs> um, Dina. She says, you have, you all have made my day today. This is so cool. Thank you, Heather, for inviting me today. How nice is that? Um, Elise said, ooh, Milan, awesome. Yeah, um, I'm really excited because obviously it's been cancelled the last couple of years, hasn't it? I went to the, the last one, whatever that was. Was it? 2019 I think it was 2019 yeah and it's such a nice time that was my first that was my first one and so far my last one and it was so nice just meeting up with people it's where I met Amanda from Bido perfumes and um it's such yeah it's just such a nice time um talking with other perfume people it's not so much it's not so much going around sniffing all the stuff because that's really overwhelming because it's too much. It's far too much to sniff. Like, it's ridiculous. You can't really form an opinion on anything because you're sniffing too much. But it's, uh, it's the people like, and John always says we're about, the, you know, fragrances. It's, it's about the people in the end. And um, yeah, absolutely loved uh, just meeting meeting people that you've maybe spoken to online or, um, yeah, I met... Um, uh, Fort and Manley, Mr. Fort and Manley, <laughs> I've forgotten his bloody name now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just really nice. Um, so I'm excited, but probably more excited about the pizza. <laughs> uh, John says, I want to go to France and accidentally lose my passport. Well, you can do that. Go and stay with my mum, you'll love it. Uh, Elaine wants to go to Grasse in France, not sure if it's spelt right. Yes, it, that is right. Um, yeah, Elaine, that, that's somewhere I definitely need to go. I was kind of, I was thinking, this two weeks I've got off, I was thinking I might go down to the south of France and, and at least have a day in grass. Uh, but I've been sensible and decided not to travel and to kind of like maybe try and get my house in order. And my mum's over as well. So I didn't go list of places to go I definitely want to get down there uh, you've got it's got to be done isn't it by a perfume lover I've got to go to grass uh, Claire says are you going to do a vlog in Milan I will try I did do one last time so I will try this time um, it's nice to look back on it you know but I'm not there the whole thing on the Saturday which is the last day I'll be flying home because I have to be at work on the Sunday. So that's a bit of a shame. I think the last night's the night they have the big ball, the big party thing. Uh, so I will miss that, which is sad, but I will try and do a vlog and get some footage. <laughs> Bernard Ford and Cecil Manley says John. <laughs> Rassai, isn't it? It's Rassai. Yeah, I met Rassai. Um, Yes, Alicia, that's right. Um, 
talking about Jeremy Fragrance. Yeah, at that ball, at that party, Jeremy Fragrance came over to talk to me. And um, and uh, I think we had a hug or something. And then he said, oh, you smell amazing. And it was Lume Feline, which um, Atelier Dizors had just gifted me um, that day or the day before. She, uh, uh, The lovely Megan from the brand uh, gave me a bottle when I went to see them. And uh, so I sort of like sprayed it liberally. But he was like, you could tell it was genuine. Like it wasn't just, just saying it for the sake of it. it was like, oh, you smell amazing. What is it? So it's quite cool to get a fragrance compliment from from the king of fragrances. He was wearing more than just his tighty whities. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Um. How oh, this is really itching. This little see it a little lump there yeah must avoid perfume in that spot there mm. right okay I think I'm done now uh, because I am tired I actually went to the gym today I didn't work that hard but I went I didn't just go though I actually did some stuff but anyway I am tired so that's all uh, thank you everyone for watching and uh, it's been really lovely to chat to you all and I will see you very, very soon. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Dina, that, um, he's German. <laughs> um, yes, thank you. Bye.